good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Talk. I'm Pastor Rick here at New Life in the offices of New Life. And uh, we'll be with you for the next half hour, uh, hopefully encouraging you and helping you in your walk with the Lord. So hello, everybody. Uh, I see there's 10 people on here, which is wonderful. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, you can write under your comments, hello. Uh, this way I know who you are, but it's not necessary, but if you'd like to. Let's see, Danica's here. God bless you, Danica. Sandy, God bless you. Tony, always good to see you, Tony. Jason, good to see you here. And Gail Zanke down in Tennessee, Christine Mitnick out in Colorado, and Eva, of course, just up the road a piece in New Hampshire. God bless you, Eva. Good to see you. Um, so it was a great day on Sunday, Alinda. All right, Alinda's in Virginia. Paula Cantanzaro, all right, good to see you all. Um, thank you for saying hello. Uh, so yeah, Sunday was a great day at church. I appreciate all the birthday wishes. Paula, happy birthday to you as well. Uh, when when was it exactly? Was it Sunday or Monday? I forget when it was. But I know it's a, your April. You're an April baby. There are many April babies out there. I found out. But anyway, so yeah, I had a big birthday. Hit the big seven zero, and uh, I always wondered what it would be like when I hit seventy. Now I know, and I I feel fine. I feel just like it's another day. It's, I feel blessed to be able to do what I do. All right, so Paula's was the 25th, and a mighty, mighty happy birthday to you, Paul. I hope you had a great day. Hope you're still basking in the, the glory of your birthday. Your birthdays are special, you know? I, I love my birthday. And I love that I'm born in April. April's a great month to be born in. It reminds me of springtime and new things happening and God's blessing. The leaves are coming out and everything like that. So, oh, thank you, Gail. Well, we, we make the best of what we have, don't we, you know? But I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so my, my grandfather, one of my grandfathers passed away when he was only about 58. My other grandfather lived to be about 76. But in those days, so one grandfather died in the 50s or early, yes, yeah, 50s. And the other one died in the 60s. But at that time, when you were 60 or when you were 70 or 75 in the 60s, you were considered old for the most part. Uh, as we've progressed, I think healthcare is better. Uh, hey, Lynn Harrison, uh, you know, diet is better, exercise is better, uh, people are living longer. Uh, my father passed away at age 82 in 2005. My mom's still alive at 94. Um, praise the Lord for that. So one never knows. I, I preached on Sunday, uh, these, uh, let's see, the days of our lives um, from Psalm 90, that our, our days are 70 years, maybe if we're strong, 80 years, and, and what we have to show for it is a lot of hard work and sorrow, <clears throat> and then we're cut off and we fly away, meaning we all have a We'll have a lifespan to live, you know. We got into that on Sunday. And then uh, Psalm 90, verse 12. So, Lord, teach us your ways. Teach us to number our days uh, so that we can be wise, have a heart of understanding and heart of wisdom. Uh, hello, Jackie. Hello, Doreen. Good to see you all here today. So let me open up with a word of prayer. Um, I do want to pray for... Uh, for um, Joanne Feldman, uh, we were on the phone quite a bit this morning. Gary, her husband Gary, is in New Jersey, uh, staying at his mom's in New Jersey, but he's, a, he's visiting a specialist in New York City. Gary has cancer himself, and so he's down there. She's over here. Uh, thankfully, we have a team of ladies that are visiting with uh, Joanne, walking the dog and you know, trying to prepare some food and stuff. Um, Anita Trennis has been very helpful with that putting together a schedule. Uh, but there are some medical concerns that Joanne has, and so we're, we've been on the phone this morning trying to get her some medical care. So let's pray. We also want to pray for Sandy Bistany's family. Uh, Sandy's sister, Fifi, uh, lost a son to a heroin overdose. Um, I think on Friday he passed. And it's a very sad situation. This is the second son that she lost uh, to that plague of heroin. 
So I want to pray for the Lord to comfort that family. So let, let's go to the Lord right now. Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you, Lord, for birthdays and for happiness. Thank you, Lord. Bless Paula's uh, year. Let, let this be a great year of life for her. Thank you for all the birthday wishes I received on Sunday and throughout the last couple of days. Lord, it's been, it's been joyous. It's been a joyful time, and we appreciate all of that. And Lord, in the midst of that, I know there's people struggling and have health issues and problems. So we pray for Joanne. We pray for healing for her in the name of Jesus. We pray that in Gary's absence, she'll feel your presence. Thank you for the ladies going over there every day to help her. Let that continue to be a great ministry. Be with Gary, Lord. Let him get the help that he needs down there in New York City. Uh, we pray that his cancer would be discovered, healed, cured, whatever, but that your hand of blessing will be upon him in a very powerful way. Keep them both strong as they're separated from each other right now. And Lord, for, um, for Sandy Bistany's sister and um, her family, we just pray for your comforter to come and, and touch their hearts as they grieve the loss of, of their son, uh, Jeremiah. And we pray, Lord, that um, young people, he was 33, I believe, that young people in his world would, would recognize the issue and the problems with drugs and drug abuse and drug use. We pray, Lord, for healing of anyone that's addicted and, and strength for anyone that's grieving right now in the family or friends. And Lord, we pray your blessing over our time here on Tuesday Talk. Let it be a good time in your word. Uh, may your Holy Spirit minister to us powerfully at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Well, I thought we'd do something today that I haven't done before, and that is to share a devotional with you. Uh, this book is called A, a Psalm in Your Heart. Uh, it's written by George O. Wood. Uh, George Wood is a former... Um, uh, general superintendent of the Assemblies of God here in America and was also a superintendent of the Worldwide Assembly of God, which is a massive organization. Um, he's a PhD uh, in, in several different areas, um, but he wrote, he wrote a, uh, this book in a follow-up. This, this book is, uh, goes, on, goes through Psalms 1 through 75. And so I'm gonna, I finished my other devotional, uh, on my birthday, and I'm gonna. I started this one the other day, and so I'm gonna go through it. I haven't read it yet today, so this is gonna be new and fresh for me. But it's based on Psalm four. So if you want to go there, uh, he uses the NIV, which I don't usually use, but that's okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use his his words and his translation today. But uh, and every time I read a psalm. I wonder, what is he going to get out of this? Because sometimes I read a psalm, it can go in a lot of different directions. But he seems to, to capitalize on certain key things. So this is, this is called a good night's sleep, based on Psalm number four. And before he gets into it, he gives a little intro. This is what he says. How well are you sleeping? Do you find, along with David and Job, that there are hurtful seasons when you toss and turn the whole night long? Is it possible to reach the calm and repose reflected in Psalm 4? I've had some nights like that, and they're not fun. <laughs> if you are not yet in the first flush of a hard experience, Psalm 4 holds encouragement. The wrecking ball of life may have demolished what you thought was safe and secure, but God intends to give you strength to rebuild. Psalm 4 finds you in the rebuilding process where uh, gaping holes still exist. But enough damage has already been repaired by the Lord to make you confident of the final result. True, the pain is still there. That's why David begins the psalm by saying, Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. So... Yeah, the, 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 these are little things that like you can read a psalm and not really pick up on. But the first line of the psalm is, Lord, when I call you, will you answer me? I mean, did anyone, anyone relate to that? that they, Jason says yes. 
Hear me, Lord, when I call. So he, so the NIV says, Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief <clears throat> from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. So I'm going to give his little commentary for verse number one. A, the word distress carries the connotation of being in a very tight place where there's very little room to turn around or maneuver. You are penned in or penned down, and there seems to be no escape from your difficulty. David shows us what we must do in such a circumstance. Simply call upon the Lord. Oh, man, I have been there numerous times. You know, you don't know what to do. You're, you're preoccupied with this happened, that happened. They said this, he said that, you know. And, and we have to step back and say, okay, I'm going to call upon the Lord. Lord Jesus Please answer me, help me in the middle of this distressful thing that I'm in. But it's hard to keep our, your attention solely on the Lord, for you cannot help but focus on what put you in the tight place. For David, the pain had come from others. So verses 2 and 3. Verse 2. How long, O men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Selah. Selah means to think about it, ponder it, pause. Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. How could they have done this to David? David smarts in the realization that he did not deserve the treatment he received. Man, how many times have I said Lord, what did I do? Did I deserve this? I didn't do anything. I'm just trying to live. And, you know, so there are some times when life happens, you know. And he had, uh, he had his injur injurers really, oh, had his injurers really known God and been close to him, they would not have treated him so unjustly. Such ones had pushed him away, but God held David close. Our society is filled with spouses who have betrayed or hurt each other, parents who have abandoned children, children who have turned against parents, friends who have fallen out with one another. When you are on the receiving end of such hurtful conduct, your sole consolation may be that when the one you love has drawn away from you, the Lord has drawn even closer to you. Hmm. That's good right there. Let, let, me, let me read verses 2 and 3 again from the NIV. How long, O men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusion and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself, and the Lord will hear when I call to him. So verse 3, verse 1, he says, Lord, answer me when I call. Verse 3 says, I know you will answer, you will hear when I call. So David comes to grips with his own hard feelings against those who wounded him. The anger surfaced as he thought about them and spoke in an imaginary way to them in verses 2 and 3. He lay down to sleep, but memory threatened to keep him awake. He struggled to gain control over his rage and hurt. In doing so, he made a, a foundational decision. Rather than, rather than focusing on how others had mistreated him, he focused on the need for change in his own life, verses 4 and 5. So verses, verses 4 and 5 say this, In your anger do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Selah. Offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. In place of holding them to blame for his condition, David looked within his own heart. Rather than extracting the speck from their eye, he sought to remove the log from his own eye. Um, Alinda said, children that have turned against their parents. Boy, that, that is a heartbreak right there, Alinda. Many of us can relate to that. Hey, Angela, glad you're here. So, uh, Angela, we're in Psalm 4, if you just joined us. So this psalm takes us, you know, 
Hear me when I call, verse 1. I, verse 3, I, but I know the Lord has set apart for himself uh, him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call. So David kind of resolves that. Um, verse 4 and 5, be angry and do not sin. Um, I think Paul said the same thing, didn't he? Be angry and do not sin. Don't, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You know, anger is an is a emotion. It's not sinful in and of itself. It's what we do with it. But meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Be st uh, uh, Doreen said it, be still and know that I am God. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. You know, when I have sleepless nights, and I've had a few, I've had some recently, just thinking about things. And uh, I, I have memorized many years ago uh, a plan of praying for one hour. I think I shared this with the church. I could pray for an hour. I could, I could, I could make it shorter, make it like a half an hour. I could even do it probably in, in 15 or 20 minutes. But I memorized all these scriptures in my head. So if I'm laying in bed and tossing and turning, I said, all right, I'm not going to let Satan use my mind as a playground. I'm going to start quoting scripture and praying the best I can. And, and sometimes I'll do that. Uh, yeah, that's right, Doreen. I'll do that even though I may fall asleep and I'll wake up a little bit later. I'll continue doing it. It's like a battle all night long. Um, I find that that works the best for me. Um, I find a lot of times I'm in and out of sleep, actually, during the night. I'll wake up for a little bit and toss and turn and go back. But it's good to, like David's doing here, uh, at that time, offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. A sacrifice of righteousness is, is sacrificing your time to, to give to the Lord, even though you're tossing and turning and you think, Lord, I have to get some sleep because I have a busy day tomorrow. So it's a way to surrender it to the Lord. Uh, so, so the commentary goes on. But you cannot change the other person, nor can you change the events which have brought you harm. But you could take responsibility for your attitude or your anger uh, and cease think, uh, thrashing and striving and do the right thing, offer sacrifices and trust in God. At first, things may not get much better. Many are asking, uh, verse number six, who can show us any good? Uh, let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord, O Lord. However, David looks not to the external showing of good, <clears throat> but to an inner presence of the Lord. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O God. Yeah, let, let the light of your countenance shine upon us, O God. What you need in the darkness of despair is not the changing of your circumstances, but light to see the face of Jesus. David lets us know that the Lord's face is always shining toward us with the light of compassion, acceptance, endearment, friendship, and love. Now that's a good word right there. Verse number six, uh, there are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Uh, many times in the New Testament, Jesus says, I am the light. Uh, John writes about that. He is the light of the world. The light of the world has come. His own did not receive him, but whoever does receive him, he's given them the right to be called the child of God. So yeah, let, let's remember in, in our darkest moments of despair and uncertainty, Jesus is a light to us. That's the test right there. What are we going to do when we're all stressed and, and dealing with these issues of life? And we all have them. You know, it could be kids rebelling, it could be a financial crunch, it could be a health problem. The list is, you know, it goes on and on. It could be something somebody said that wasn't meant to bother us, but as you lay down to go to sleep that night, you're rethinking the day, and that one thing that somebody said or did, it just bothers you, it hurts you. Maybe it wasn't intentional, but, you know, you take it that way. And let's face it, we all have our insecurities. We all have our, our way to process everything. And uh, and those moments, I, I think it's a test to see what are we going to do right then and there. See, Satan would love for us to play with that and even make it worse than what it is. But the Lord is saying, let, let your sacrifice be a sacrifice of righteousness and 
surrender it give it give it over to god and let jesus shine his light upon that little area of your life that's so distracting it's like a having a splinter in your finger you ever have a splinter in your finger man they are so tiny but it hurts the whole it hurts your whole day you know your whole day is messed up until you get that splinter out of your finger and that one thing that could be like a needle in you uh, let the lord jesus shine his light on that you know, he'll, he may give us a different perspective. He may even just give us grace to deal with it and cope with it and say, oh, well, you know. Uh, that's right, Jackie. You'll go to him with all of our cares. So, okay. Um, let's see, where are we here? Life had stripped David of so much, but not the presence of the Lord. That's a heavy statement. Life had stripped David of so much, but not the presence of the Lord. Thus David came to his gentle resolution. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine, and when their grain and new wine, <laughs> I'm sorry. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. That's verses seven and eight. Wow. Let me read it from the New King James. You have put gladness in my heart. I, look, compare verse 7 to verse 1. Verse 1, Lord, you have to answer me when I cry to you. Verse 7, you put gladness in my heart. There's, there's a process of surrendering. It's all mental, spiritual, you know. I can picture him laying in bed doing all this. I mean, you, you ever think about what goes on in your head as you lay down in your bed at night? Man, a million things go through our minds. But we start out all anxious and in a matter of, I don't know how long this was, let's say a matter of minutes, David kind of resolves all the conflict and says, okay, you've put gladness in my heart uh, more than in the season that their grain and wine increased. I will, lie, I will both lie down in peace and I will sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me to dwell in safety. That's a, that's a confident believer right there. Sleep can come when you realize that your happiness is greater than the external laughter of those who wounded you. While they may feel good about the pleasant trappings of their life, grain and new wine, abounding, your position is far more enviable because you no longer require external things to be favorable in order for you to find fulfillment. That's a sign of maturity. Spiritual growth comes as you pour out your heart to the Lord. Through prayer, you move from the distress of verse 1, uh, the tight place where you are squeezed in, to the safety of verse number 8, where you can stretch out and sleep. Prayer does more than change things. It changes you. Oh, that's a good one. Prayer does more than change things. It changes you. And then he has a little prayer right here. So I want to read this prayer, then I want to read the psalm again. O oh Lord, you know, you well know my anxiety. Quiet my heart so I may be content and joyful. Help me to do right even if others have done me wrong. May I lie down tonight and sleep in your peace and safety. Wow. I had a situation uh, just yesterday, actually, where if, if like for a minute i was overwhelmed with care and concern and not anxiety maybe maybe it was anxiety but i thought you know what i can't do anything about this i could get angry i could get upset um i could just you know you know even get mad at god you know sometimes I, I'm, and i'm sorry to say that but but I, 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 read this, I read the devotional before this, which was Psalm 3, which was similar, actually. But in, a, in, our, very, in our very moment of, uh, of, of that angst, of that, that anxiety, that's the test. That is the test. What do we do with it? You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean believe it or not, I, well, I believe, I'm sure you would believe it. I can remember back in the day, before I was a Christian person, I mean, I would literally, 
you know, pick up, I remember uh, I picked up a, a hammer or something in my father's garage and threw it against the wall. I was so mad about something. Just put a big hole in the wall. I remember kicking a hole through a wall one time. I just, argh, just striking out, you know. Uh, thankfully, that doesn't happen, but I could see where it could happen. Uh, but, uh, but it's those moments as a Christian person. Well, we depend on the Holy Spirit to, to catch us, to convict us, to calm us. Uh, Jackie, I think your scripture is in First Peter, what is it, chapter 5? I think it is, cast all your anxieties or all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. You know, making every request known to the Lord. But that, that's easy to say, you know, when everything's going fine. Oh, just pray to the Lord, everything. But, but it's said in the context of your life is falling apart. <laughs> That, that's the challenge. Um, and that's the time when we absolutely need the Lord. Uh, Doreen, worry is down, is down payment on a problem. That Man, Doreen, you're absolutely... I say that all the time. You know, people talk to me about different things. A lot of times we worry about something that might happen. We assume it's going to happen. It didn't happen yet, but we're expecting the worst because we all have a little bit of pessimism in our heart. <laughs> I do too. And I, we have to catch ourselves and say, okay. Uh, my old pastor used to say, you know, when you pray, say, thank, the, thank you, Lord, nothing happened yet. You know, thank you, Lord, I didn't do anything yet. And, and just step back, you know, give God a chance. Uh, Isaiah said it too. He said, uh, be still and know that, uh, the Lord said to Isaiah, be still and know that I am God. So let me, let me read, I'm going to read this from the New King James. Sometimes I get a little mixed up with NIV and New King James. Just little differences, but I'm more familiar with New King James. So Psalm number four. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You know, that's like, that's some way to start a prayer. That, that's not our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, that, that's what Jesus said. This is, hear me when I call, O God, <laughs> you know. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. He, it's almost like David is like in a tough spot. How long, oh you sons of... And now he's directing his thoughts toward these other people. How long will you turn my glory to shame? In other words, how long will you hurt me or, or belittle me or you know upset me? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? How long will you live in a lie and blame me for something I didn't even do? And that word selah, that word selah is in this psalm a couple of times, twice. Uh, and, and people are a little, little concerned, not, they're a little perplexed as to what it actually means. There's no Hebrew word, but, but we, we, we think that it means to pause, to think of, like in music, uh, there's, there's certain musical signatures that cause a, an orchestra to pause or wait, you know, wait a couple of beats. But here it's like, wait on the Lord and think about what you just read. So think about that. But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. Now, who is godly? I mean, we all want to be godly. So this, this would say to me, let's make sure our sins are forgiven. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Let's make sure our sins are forgiven. If we're at fault, if we instigated a problem, let's confess that to the Lord and clear our own heart. And he says, be angry and don't sin. It's an emotion. It's like laughter, sadness, uh, joy, anger. They're all emotions, and God gave us emotions, so uh, don't sin with it, but you know, have your anger. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Selah. Think about it. Um, think of yourself. Think of your own situation. And then offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. The, sac oh, um, the sacrifices of righteousness in another place are a broken and contrite heart. So just pour it out to the Lord. Lord, I, am, I don't know what happened. They're, they hurt me. Maybe I was at fault. Lord, cleanse me. Forgive me. But Lord, I, I, take this angst from me. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. In other words, Lord, you show us what's good. You show us what's better. 
Let, your, let the light of your countenance. Man, God is light, isn't he? Jesus is the light of the world. He does say for us to be the light of the world too, you know. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. But Lord Jesus, let your light shine on my face. I need your, I need, I need your light upon my face because my face is contorted. My, my face is conflicted. My face is not happy. My face is worried. It's like it's not right. I need, I need your glory on me, Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increase. So you, the joy that you give me is greater than the joy that you give those people who may prosper in some way. I will both lie down in peace and safety. That's a positive confession. For you alone, O Lord, make me to dwell in safety. So that's the word for today. Turn to the Lord. Let me read this prayer one more time. And then we'll, we'll pray a little bit more. O oh Lord, you well know my anxiety. Quiet my heart so that I may be content and joyful. Help me to do right even if others have done me wrong. May I lie down tonight and sleep in your peace and in your safety. Man, that is a good word right there. I would, I would probably say this if uh if you know that someone has hurt you i mean i i've been trying to do this myself let's make an effort to pray for them and i i know sometimes that's hard to do sometimes i don't even want to mention somebody's name to the lord i just don't i want to get i want to get over it and beyond it but lately the lord's been sharing with me you know what even from years ago <clears throat> bring those names before the Lord. Bring those people before the Lord. Because certainly, in spite of how we might feel, the Lord loves them too. And the Lord would love to save them. And if, if they're saved already, the Lord, Lord would love to teach them and help them grow deeper. So I want to encourage you today. Um, let me see, what was the name of that? A Good Night's Sleep. So this is the name of the book. If You, you could probably pick it up if you want to order it. I don't know how much it is. It's not too much. A psalm in your heart. It takes every psalm, every single psalm. There's two, ver two uh, what do you call it? Two volumes of this. Uh, the next one is Psalm 76 to 150, I guess. Um, but they are, it's amazing that he has a devotional from every single psalm. That is an amazing feat in and of itself. In fact, uh, in the uh, where did I read it? I think I read it. I forget where I read it, but when George Wood wrote this, his daughter, uh, if you're a parent, you could probably relate to this, but his daughter had left the Lord, and I think she was going through a divorce. And this is a very prominent, I mean, general superintendent of the Assemblies of God. This is like the, the highest you could go in our denomination. This is a massive responsibility and also involved with the World, uh, world Assembly of God. This is a huge huge responsibility. He's an educated man. He's a Pentecostal man. But his daughter was going through a difficult time. And, and at that time, he, he started to meditate on the Psalms because he needed help for himself. And I, I could relate to that. I mean, a few years ago, um, one, of our, one of our kids was going through a really tough time. And I was, I was discouraged. And I, I read that. And I, I remember I read also about Jim Cimbala. Jim Cimbala is the pastor of Brooklyn Tabernacle down in New York City. And uh, he also had a time in his life many years ago now when his daughter left the Lord and left home and he didn't even know where she was. And he was the pastor of this booming church and prominent, a very prominent man and his daughter was nowhere to be found. He was so grieved. He felt like, who am I to be speaking to people and I can't even minister to my old, own daughter. <clears throat> but it was through a, a series of events that um, during one of their prayer meetings, a lady came up to him and said, Pastor Symbol, the Lord told me to tell you, don't worry about your daughter because God has her in the palm of his hand, something like that. And within a day or two, believe it or not, he got a knock on his door from his daughter that came home and repented and made things right. And, uh, but he went through a very dark season in that. 
And now she's, uh, she and her husband are pastoring a church, an affiliate of Brooklyn Tabernacle, I think somewhere like in Chicago or Detroit or somewhere. And so very, very uh, beautiful story of reconciliation. But listen, we all go through these, uh, the, the sorrows of the night, you know, the, they're, they're terrible. And uh, they're filled with anguish. But the Lord, is, the Lord is there. He's the lily in the valley as well as the bright morning star. He's there in, the, in, our, in our doldrums. And it's always somewhat of a test. And if you ever feel like you just can't do it, you know, reach out to another person, another brother or sister. And you, you could share your heart with them or your pastor. And, and have them pray with you. Have them listen to you. And listen, if, if someone's bearing their soul to you, we don't have, always have to know all the answers, you know. And we won't. But we, we will know the one that does know the answers. And we could listen. And we could have empathy. Sometimes the greatest thing is simply to have empathy with others. And then uh, we could pray with that person. So anyway, uh, that's the devotional for today. Psalm number four. You could read it over. Let me pray one more time. And then we're going to have to sign out. But thank you for being here. Father, we do pray your blessing upon everyone here, 12 people. Bless them and take care of us all, Lord, each one of us with our own set of circumstances, our own set of uh, anxious moments in our lives. Lord, we call upon your name. Jesus, Lord, come. Give us the guidance we need to navigate these difficult waters that we live in today. Thank you, Lord, for Tuesday Talk. Bless everyone here. Let's have a good rest of the week. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So listen, we are having a membership class tonight at 6 o'clock in the church. If you can make it, great. If you can't, let me know. We'll meet privately. And uh, we also have a water baptism class on Thursday. So check your calendar for that and check your email. All right, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day and a great week. Keep me in your prayers, and I'll keep you in my prayers. All right, God bless you. Bye-bye.